Welcome to Three Things. Tonight's guest is a mainstay in Chicago sports talk radio for the last two decades. Sandwiched by a hiatus to the left coast, San Diego, just because. He's the executive producer of the Lawrence Holmes Show that airs daily from noon to 2 p.m. on WSCR The Score, 670 a.m. He's also the co-host with Chris Tannehill, we'll get to him later, of the popular Locked on Sox podcast, which he had me on back in uh, November of 2019 to sing the praises of the Jose Abreu extension. A man with a clever tongue for oddball nicknames and who's known out there in the radio streets as the realness. I want to welcome to the stage the powerful and talented Herb Lawrence. Herb, welcome to Three Things. Yeah. Thank you for having yes. me, guys. <laughs> welcome, Very man. honored to be here. Thank you for having me on your show. Hell yeah. Herb, I, I got to kick this off with a couple of thank yous. First off, I want to thank you for having me on the podcast, which I already mentioned. Mm -hmm. you, you are like one of the nicest people I've ever met. And us doing any of this like faux media stuff, because we're not real media, we're kind of bullshit media. Uh, you were just the best, showed me around. I got to meet uh, Jumpin' Julian Perez, which was kind yes. of thrill, actually. It was <laughs> like, I, mean, I was a younger man, and I hear B96 and him on there. And then uh, also, obviously, we got to thank you for uh, doing the Reggie's party with us, which I think the audio of that exists, but we're not putting it out on the streets here. We're going to save that for a later mixtape when we get a chance. <laughs> it's only available on cassette somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and, la and last but not least, uh, I want to thank you for having me on the radio to talk 108 Tourney, which was kind of crazy. I was a little bit shocked and worried that I might curse. But can you answer one question yes. about that uh, appearance? Was Rick Camp fired because of me being on the show? Mostly, yes. <laughs> <laughs> they know they couldn't fire me because I'm too old. So, like, uh, I'll get Rick. <laughs> but he had to get – they brought him back, though. So, it's all they good. bring him back. I saw that. That, that, that was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, but thank you for having me at all those things. Like, uh, the Reggie's thing was probably the best thing I've been a part of, socks-wise, other than championships. Like, the camaraderie we had that night was just – Endless. I mean, was it January? It seems like mm -hmm. years ago. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah, January was, this year. Just meeting everybody, going on the stage, talking. It was an awesome time, and we got to do it again. You know, of course, when this pandemic ends, man, mercy. That was just a blast. Everybody was there, had a great time. It was fun. Good job, was, Herb. Was I don't like even know how many night. beers you bought that night because I felt like every <laughs> time I saw you, you were buying somebody a beer. Like I, I was. Like there were just people coming off the street that you were giving beers to. I was I was impressed. <laughs> hey, you gotta share the wealth. You know, if, if people invite you to places, you might as well let people enjoy some brew. I mean, all the I mean, five dollar beer, you know, it's not that much. <laughs> See, it's funny because every time I saw him, we were waiting in line to use the pisser because we were drinking so much that we had a had a had a camp back there the whole night. It was great. Get that out of there. <laughs> just drunk. I'm, as well. I, now, I brought up your uh, your partner in crime, Chris Tannehill, mm -hmm. on the Locked on Sox podcast, which your your podcast is a smash. You guys are a little newer to the podcast game as far as the Sox podcast, but very popular right out of the gate. But um, I happened to listen to an episode. You guys were throwing a little bit of shade at De La Salle, my alma mater, Cherise's alma mater. Um, and hey, I hey. distinctly heard Chris Tannehill call the meteors the meat eaters. And <laughs> I got immediately enraged because as a younger man, when we were in school, the rival schools would call us the meat eaters. Every, there was a nickname, a fucked up nickname for every school. And meteors, you think, oh, you can't get meteors. Oh, yeah, you can get meteors, fucking meat eaters. The funny yeah, thing is, know, he, oh, go, go, ahead. Ahead, go ahead. I don't know how we got on De La Salle. Like, I forgot the train of thought. There was had to be something where we're talking about that area and 35th and such in that area. But, yeah, I remember me, like, breaking bad on De La Salle and then referencing you and my guy, Cy Strezzo, who went there, too. And I was like, yep. oh, they're going to be mad at me. It's going to be sad. But, yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry about that meat eaters thing. I didn't even know your uh, nickname was uh, the meat eaters. Wow. It's a terrible <laughs> nickname. Not, it is a terrible word. Like, like Nothing scary about that. <laughs> I, mean, oh. was, I mean, you forgot about Ethan Shaw. Ethan Shaw oh, yeah. is also De La Salle. He was actually my graduating class, so I know Big E. Nice guy. Really nice guy. Real Always nice was. guy. Gentle yeah. giant. Yep. Yeah. Meteors are only scary if you're a dinosaur. That's the only, that's the only <laughs> thing. That <it> could <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, like, you know, us Sox fans are wishing for mediator, meteors to come after today's news. But uh, otherwise, yeah, meteors are, meteors are fine. Let's uh, so, miss one I'm, for a thousand miles away from the earth. 
I wonder if Carl Everett also doesn't believe in meteors. That would be, that's an interesting <laughs> question. We'll, we'll broach that topic some other time. Yeah, that's what we can get. It wasn't kind of mentioned in the Bible, so no, it's out. <laughs> <laughs> He's out. <laughs> Carl, Carl Everett's looking up the dinosaurs on the internet. It's like, yeah, the internet wasn't in the Bible either. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> And you know he's got an account on Pornhub too, so I don't know. <laughs> Allegedly, they have to. Everybody has to have a like an account. Girl, girls in T Rex uniforms having sex. <laughs> <laughs> Two things I don't believe. <laughs> Let's see it. T Rex and pornography. Bad. So Herb, as you mentioned, a very weird day in uh, in White Sox uh, fandom. Yes. They name a new manager. It was all one that we had heard about for weeks, but no one believed it. And then it actually happened. I mean, what, what do you think about today? What do you think about what happened today? Um, I didn't think it would happen. It's such a surprise that they pulled the trigger. And if you watch the press conference, it looks like Rick Hahn has the same feeling as most Sox fans. He was there as a hostage. He probably <laughs> told Jerry, dude, I'll do the, that damn bidding, and you hired this motherfucker. But I'm going to go up there with real feelings. You saw him say, Jerry reached out, we came to a consensus, and once we came to a consensus, I got on board. Yeah. That's what he said. The man is yep. not happy about this. He shouldn't be. <laughs> he got his power you sir. As a yep. person that has put this thing together, and mostly everybody thinks he's an architect, to not put the final piece on it, it kind of hurts. And he knows that having Tony La Russa hurt some in free agency. You've already seen things from Marcus Stroman about liking things where people are like, hey, you don't want this guy. He's not a friend to the African-American community. He's talking about these things on Glenn Beck. He's talking about these things about Colin Kaepernick on Glenn Grand Benziger's show. So it's not a great day. As I am a guy who doesn't think managers win or lose games, it's going to be negligible on the field necessarily. Mm -hmm. Like yep. his moves will be good. They'll be fine. They'll be old school. But I think the talent will win over. But I just don't like it for the people on the team. It doesn't send a good message. It's uh, antithetical what Rick just said two weeks ago about the man he was looking for. I just don't like Jerry Reinsdorf dealing in baseball moves. Just sign the checks, yay or nay, and then move the hell out of the way. You hired the people. Let them do their jobs. That, and that's – that's sort of interesting, Herb, because what I would say, because anything that I see on Sox Twitter, when it goes awry, it goes wrong, like Menchado, that was not, that was not Rick Hahn's fault. That was Jerry. He was too cheap. Um, and, and if something else doesn't happen the way it's supposed to happen, that's Jerry's fault. So Rick knows what he's in, what, what he's gotten into here. By this time, he knows. So, like, if he wasn't happy with how it had been going, like, get the fuck out. You know, like, go do something else, especially now. And that's why it'll be interesting with, like, in the next couple of weeks to see what ends up happening because I, I think you might see him jump out. And then we're going to see how good Rick, you know, is, you know, in, in the general sense is how quickly he gets picked up by somebody else. But I, I, I just, you know, I, 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 I kind of – I'm on the, same, on the same page as you guys, and I think these guys are too, that a manager means very little. It's about what – happens on the field and what these guys do on the field. I don't think Rick Renneria cost us game three with his bad pitching decisions. I think guys could have got some hits somewhere. We would have, it would have been fine. We had Jose Abreu just not do what he was, Jose Abreu had been doing all fucking year. He did not do it in that game three, game two. And I mean, that's just, that's what's going to happen. But I, I just, I'm really, I don't know. I, I, I think that, it's not the best move. It's definitely not sexy. There's nothing sexy about this move whatsoever. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. There is something a little sexy about the <laughs> front guy. All right? Otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, our hot tub show don't work. All right? Uh, but, <laughs> you're damn right. I think well, none of us have gotten shingles yet, so I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> we'll work up to it. We'll get there, man. We'll the get the there. biggest takeaway from what, what you were just saying was that I, I felt like Rick Hahn had like some – instant karma on his consensus bullshit when he's saying that rick renteria came to an agreement with them that they mm. should fire his ass well now he's got to say that he came to an agreement that he wanted tony la russa that so it pretty good. That yeah. shit bit him back real fast but yeah i mean look i mean like I, I i put it out there today like i i'm with you on the idea of like it's not going to matter much on the field i think it's a safe choice 
in in that respect. I don't I don't see it being like I don't see him doing something to like gloriously fuck up. Like I, I don't I don't see at least not in the on the field. Mm-hmm. Like he might say some <laughs> shit. It's gonna be he's terrible. He's definitely said it. He's already said it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he's so, <laughs> well, he already he, said it. He's We're walking already. That, he's walking that shit back already, just like Marcus Stroman's walking back his like <laughs> tweets. So like, everybody's walking this shit back right now. Yeah. But was, but at the end of the day, like, I don't I don't really get it. Like, I don't really understand why this was the choice. Um, but at the same time, like, I I, I wrote it earlier. And in, in the blog that I wrote at like five this morning going, I know that this is going to happen. So I'm just going to write this shit now. Uh, I'm not excited about this, nor am I like outraged. Like it's just a kind of, it's, it's a almost meh. a nothing to me other than the fact that it's just kind of dumb. So like, I, I'd like, <laughs> I, I feel like just go out and get some good free agents. Now, if you don't get out, if you don't go out and get the good free agents, then everyone's going to shit on this because they should. Like if, if this is preventing you from the free agents, then this was a bad hire. If yeah. it doesn't, if you could go out and get these guys, like if they signed Marcus Stroman next week, like most people would forget about all this shit. Yeah, yes. they wouldn't care. Yeah. If they go out and sign, you know, some guy way down the list. Rick it, Porcello. Oh, it, <laughs> man. Someone like that. That's you know? a White Sox pick. <laughs> It's a big fail boat yeah. rolling right into the stadium. That's a guy Hail who will be pissed. <laughs> and you don't want to do that. You don't want to, like, say this is a, such a White Sox move because you think you've moved past those things. And with Rick Hahn and the latest in um, what the White Sox have done, you're like, okay, this is new White Sox. This is what White Sox don't do. And then you hire a guy that you've already had on the team before who's old. This is an old school move. Jerry's meddling in. Golly. So yeah, Rick Porcello would be the ideal guy. I love, <laughs> I love Carlo, Carlos, uh, Jose Quintana, but that'll be another guy that they'll bring back. Oh, let's bring Q back. And he's not the guy this year. We need a top of the rotation guy, Strowman, Bauer be probably way too much, but I don't think they're coming here. Firstly, because I don't know if we're going to pony up the money because they're already acting cheap because of, the pandemic but they have enough yep. money i don't know if you guys watched josh nelson's uh prediction today with the um what's that 120 million dollar payroll yeah i read it yeah depressing. like <laughs> doc Peterson was good and then all the rest i was like oh this is so terrible like, it was like alex the... wood on a one year it was like taiwan walker yeah. on a one year it was like all the all the retreads let's bring all these retreads in here you know yeah it was so white sucks and i was like this is a time to strike you're in the stop. You're in the stuff right now, and I think that was what Rick was thinking. It's like we're right now in the meat of our championship contention. We need to go balls out, and getting this guy might preclude us from getting a big time free agent. If it doesn't, this this move was nothing. Was a nothing. Like if they go and get Trevor Bauer or a big time free agent, baby, let's go. Let's just let the the uh, chips fall where they may. But I think it will cost them a guy that. They might have got otherwise. Yeah, they got poor Tim Beckham today. They they're trotting him out there as the black friend. The, the racist well, that, guy going, I got a black friend. That's that's what they did to Tim Beckham that's today. That's the thing. They're like, see, look, we yeah. just we signed a black guy the same day we hired a racist. Like it, it just like it goes it goes both. You know, it just equates it all out. He's now like, right. DFA. Uh, our, what's like uh, the black guy that got on the team? That was fast guy. Uh, Gerard Dyson. Dyson. Oh Gerard yeah, Dyson. Dyson. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's yeah. he's gone. <laughs> Yeah, get this other now, back. So we're no, we're make sure we're not racist. Okay. <laughs> Tim's got to have a buddy. Let's just get another buddy. No, I, I want Walker. I, I don't want to. I don't want to steal <laughs> yeah, right. one from Mr. Han, but Mr. Han likes to say the silver lining in here that Jerry doesn't want his buddy to fail, so he is going to pony up the money and buy free agents for Tony. So we'll see. I, I, if we get into a luxury tax situation, I will be incredibly happy and high as fuck. This would be will, great. It would be so I, good. I will wake up from that dream because that shit ain't happening. Well, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. If it happened, it would be fucking great, right? Like, you can't say it wouldn't be great. Like, it'd be no, sweet. I, I cannot. You're right. It'd be a very good time. But now, I don't think that's necessarily going to happen. I'll publicly apologize for everything I said about Jerry Rice. <laughs> Right, exactly. <laughs> well, we're going to get into the luxury tax by buying all kinds of bad contracts. Johnny Cato, right. number yes. three. Yes, I can't wait. <laughs> Guess what? 
You like Miguel Carrera? He's coming in too, man. We're going to have him right here <laughs> on the south side. <laughs> Sean Figgins coming too. <laughs> get everyone out of retirement. <laughs> Howie Kendrick. He's coming. We'll get Howie Kendrick. I mean, we got, we got it all. He did. I know he's, he's out very there right available. Now. Yeah, he's out. he is sure out there. Yeah, all right, so that was thing right one. Here. That was thing one. Now, thing two is a question that Herb brings for the group, and we'll all uh, discuss. Okay, this one is a little bit, uh, I don't know where you guys' religion's at, but it's more religion-based. So would you rather go to heaven after you pass or be reincarnated not knowing what this life is? So you're reincarnated, you're not knowing that you're Herb or Cherizi or Beef Loaf or what? Myself Summer. Well, so can, can we, let's, let's rephrase it just a little bit. Can okay. we go where you think you'll probably end up or be reincarnated? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. The afterlife, purgatory, heaven, hell, no, nothing, or reincarnation. Hmm. I mean, I can go first. Yeah, I go think Tracy should go first. I, I can go first because I will, I will say that I would choose the afterlife. And, and the reason being is that roll of the dice is too fucking big. <laughs> like, like, I mean, just like even think of the roll of the dice that you had being, being birthed into this world, landing in America versus like all the other places you could have been from, especially like I'm thinking of it from my own, my own brown self, like all the other Latin American countries I could have been from. Like, I don't know that I want to grow up in like El Salvador. Like that seems <laughs> horrifying to me. I'm sure there's plenty of people that, that grew up there and love it, but I just like those things kind of, that frightens me. Like you could end up anywhere. You could, there's, there's, there's way more chance that you end up being poor as fuck in a third world country as you grow up to be Jeff Bezos. Like, like <laughs> your odds are not good for the, the other one. Your odds are very good for being poor in a third world country. So I will just go to hell where I'm probably headed um, and just deal with all my own choices. And I think hell, like after a while, you'll get used to the hot, you know. <laughs> like, I'm a warm weather guy, man. Yeah, you, you are. But, you know? We've been down here forever, so <laughs> This could be hell right now. We don't know. <laughs> I mean, we're really, to be honest. It's unclear. Like, yeah. yeah. It's most I mean, likely for her. The hood, somebody pulls off their mask. <laughs> and like, oh, All right, I'll go next. Treasy, go ahead. that was the softest answer I could ever think of. I want to be reincarnated because I've only lived one life. And I've, I've been in the same career for 20 years. There's a lot of other shit out there I could be experiencing. And if I get reincarnated, I'm going to experience probably some random other shit. I probably will not be an accountant for 20 years in my next reincarnation. So I would look forward to that. It'd be more exciting to get out there. I don't care. But if you I'm could be Richard you. Gere's gerbil. Like you, you could go in a real bad <laughs> way. Whatever I, whatever I become, I feel like I could excel at it. I don't know. If I end up in some third world country, maybe I'll be some fucking gang leader, man. Or maybe I'll be uh, El Chapo or some shit. You know, yeah. you never know. That's you unlikely. Stupid. You know, you don't know. You, That's a dumb a answer. Rich, there's a richness to life and experiencing things. And as someone who's kind of played life fairly safe, you know, I don't mind if I had a reincarnation and I, and I had to do it and it was completely different. I had a completely different uh, experience. So you, I'll take reincarnation 100%. Uh, and and I, I, I only say that your answer is just as soft only because you could do that right now. Like you could do a second after part of your life right now. Like you're successful at what you do. You've done really well at what you do. You well, can I'm married, stop this. I, I, I'm married. I, I've got a child. I got at least yeah. some stuff I got to, has got to stay on the same track. It's on. Like I, you, you can't just, I get go, it. I mean, you, I mean, I could, but I ain't going to do that. I ain't going to just go wild on some shit. I hear you. And you I do, do, it. do some. I do some of that, right? I have like mm -hmm. these side things that I do and I'm interested in, but I'm talking about yeah. something totally different. And so I would definitely take reincarnation just to experience some other type of life. Man, like I, I am a holiday Catholic. 
uh, got married in the church uh, because I thought my mom would enjoy it. And then after we did it, my mom was like, I don't really give a fuck that you did that. And I was like, that was just a stupid waste of time. Like, I, I wish we had not done that now. And, um, but uh, I, I really liked uh, the, the priest that we had over here in Bridgeport at Nativity. Father Joe was, the, was awesome. Father Joe was the, guy, was the guy that would just be like, happy to have people in his church. He wasn't a preaching at you. He would just talk about life. And it was just, he was a good guy. I like Joe, Father Joe. Yeah, he's fa gone. Father Joe was cool. He retired. Yeah, he, yeah, he retired. Gone. Father Joe They got was rid cool. of him. And well, this is something that I've gone. noticed. Don't, don't no, no. He's, he's not, not gone. dead yet. He's just retired. He just he's not dead made, yet. He's done <laughs> priesting. He's, he's done reincarnated. Priesting. They moved him. <laughs> they got right him out of there. He's but this is what I've noticed that they do with all the good priests in, in the Catholic religion is they move them somewhere else, just like they used to do to the, the bad priests too, but they do this with the <laughs> good do. ones. Yeah, it's just <laughs> fucking weird. Like, so here's, here's, here's my thing. I, 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 I would definitely like to be reincarnated, but Cherise has got a great point. Like, it could be really good or it could be really fucking bad. And when you look into the afterlife, it's always going to be really good. So I, I feel like because I go to uh, church on all major holidays and maybe Ash Wednesday, I will get directly promoted right to heaven. So I'll be fine. So, <laughs> and, and I don't know what kind of heaven it is. It could be the Catholic heaven. It could be the um, uh, Islamic heaven, you know, with 70 virgins and shit. I don't know. So I'm going to roll the dice in that, that way versus come back as like an anteater or some bullshit and you know who knows i don't, I don't know that's so i'm gonna i'm gonna go upstairs or downstairs maybe i don't know sideways i'm not sure i don't know where it is how about you how about, Herb? what would you yeah. do well um i think to me heaven especially at night for some reason it's scary to me because of the endlessness like just not stopping the fact that we in this life have a uh, ending like it's we don't know when but it's gonna mm -hmm. end so we're like okay let's get in all the stuff we can what before we die type of thing it's some finality to it, it feels good that scares the hell out of me when you think about eternity i was like is this ever gonna end and when they say there's no crying and all that stuff and uh, streets of gold it seems like like when i used to go to san diego when i lived there it was like a um, 72 and sunny every day. Mm -hmm. Great. But as people will always say, you need some type of variance. Like you need <laughs> it to rain once in a while to appreciate the hot days. That's why summers in Chicago are the best because you understand there's, there's an alternative. There's a winter. <laughs> it's cold. So I think that's what heaven would be like. It's like, it's good. So if it's always good, it's never good type of thing. Like that's you just bullshit. can't have a hundred percent good. Yeah. I fucking love yeah. this take. I yeah, love no, this. I, I think it's, I think that's on point right there. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, so I would take the afterlife or the, um, the reincarnation. reincarnation and yes, rolling the dice real strong on a plant or a gopher or a human <laughs> again. And like Teresa <laughs> says, like maybe, um, you know, we're lucky to live in the indoor plumbing internet era being born in this time if we were i mean i know we can't go back to being reincarnated but if we were born a hundred years ago we would have to go outside to take a shit and shower and all that stuff lucky and if we're born into a third world country that would be our life so yeah i would roll dice on that i think you don't know that you're poor or underprivileged until you see other things like yeah. when I was, I lived in Wheaton. That's when I just got the shirt on. So yeah. I lived in <laughs> a lot of churches in Wheaton. Wheaton too. Huh? There's like eight thousand churches in Wheaton too. <laughs> yeah. And so I lived in apartments in Wheaton. So I knew I was not well off as my friends were immediately. So then, yeah. like you know, you grow up with your family. Like you know, we got everything we need. We don't want for anything. But you also see your friends driving cars when they're sixteen. And you're driving a hoopty. So you understand the different <laughs> lights. So, yeah, exactly. I drove 82 Buick Paseros, a boat. It was nice. But no one liked to ride in that except for my friends. So, yeah, I would just roll dice and say, maybe I can roll up and be in Beverly Hills, um, a trust fund kid. Maybe I can live in London, somewhere like, somewhere else. And like Cherise says, just, and you too, Beef Love, like, just maybe have a different life and i wouldn't know this life so 
I would just be happy in whatever life I had, right? Right. Like if I if I rolled dice and I knew that that I lived this life as a radio producer and having a good time in Chicago, and then I found out that I was like a giraffe in the middle of Africa, I'm like, fuck, this sucks. <laughs> you don't know that though the the giraffe life might be extremely enriching like it's like we can't really even imagine what these other things are like until we would be thrown every day. Them. <laughs> or maybe you know maybe, or maybe the giraffe rolled the dice and you became a producer radio producer in chicago <laughs> maybe I don't know. This is, and i think that's this is why i stopped smoking pot or initially herb is because my mind got way expanded and shit and i was like where does the earth end? Where does space end? And I'm like, you should not be thinking about this. You should be actively trying to pursue females and not sitting on your ass <laughs> playing Sega Genesis. So do not do not do this anymore and just start drinking beer and smoke cigarettes. So yeah, that's right. Herb, one, one thing on yours is what you mentioned, which, which really triggered something in my mind was you were like the endlessness of it. And all I could think is the fucking procrastination. Like you would never do anything because you'd be like, I got time to do that, and then you would never do it. I would no. never. Do, I would be in heaven and just on the couch, like oh, I got plenty, of, plenty of time. But, yeah. I would be like seven thousand pounds. That's yeah. what heaven's they, supposed to be. And then they'd yeah. send me to hell. Just chill. <laughs> yeah, at least three hundred years, I'm gonna chill on the couch. <laughs> Treasy, you work eighty-seven hours a week right now. You work eighty-seven hours a week. You didn't need to just go to heaven just to chill for a little bit. Like you could watch every movie that you ever needed to. You wouldn't have to work. It'd be great. You'd be, you would love that shit. You could sit there and just drink whiskey and watch movies all fucking day. That's heaven. See, but there's there's actually a Twilight Zone know. episode about this, where the dude dies. He's like a gangster dude, and he dies. And they got him in this. They got him in a hotel room. And there's like gambling in there. There's girls, like all of his favorite shit. But he can't leave that room. Right. And he's like, he's convinced he's in heaven. And then he starts to just fucking hate it because he wins every time he rolls, like every number he plays hits <laughs> like these girls are all over him. And he's like, this is bullshit. I want to get out of here. You know, th this this is a bullshit heaven. And the guy at the end is kind of just like, who who told you you were in heaven? You know, and like that's mm -hmm. kind of, you know, Herb, to your point, like. It's it's a hell of its own. Of, mm -hmm. of like just never ending and just being perfect like that would truly like annoy you and to no end at some point yeah oh. I, I mean and i always think about heaven like if you're lucky enough you die in your 80s 90s hundreds whatever and do you go to heaven as an 80 year old or do you go in your peak and oh, does your loved ones, hey. if you lose a loved one when you're in your 40s, that person in their 40s, is that person still 40 and you're 80? Or do you both revert back to your normal selves? Or do you go back to your peaks? Like, so if you go back to your peak and then your mom goes back to your peak, so everybody's 30. And like, <laughs> like, hey, mom, weird. how you doing? <laughs> hey, dad, you're 30. You're, you're, you're kind of a weird. And what if you don't like your family? They say you're going to be around your family all the time. Like, uh, maybe not. My cousin, that uncle, just like ass. I don't know how he got in here, but whatever. Just relax up here. I just think of heaven, the, the the whole premise is flawed. They should have worked out that whole thing better. Because I think, like when I was a kid, they would be like, "There's this great place you want to go when you die, and it's so magical." It's like, what the fuck am I doing here then? So great. <laughs> but if you kill yourself, you can't get in there. So, yeah, it's like it's like you know. weird. Like you just why am I here? This you guys why this place sucks. <laughs> <laughs> streets of gold and fun times up there. So why am I here? But yeah, they should have sold it better. Where it's just you do whatever you want to do and have your fun without encroaching anybody else's fun. That would be my heaven. I would. I'd 100%. be down with that. <laughs> well, I think that's for, what it is. I think that's what you think it is. I don't know. That would be great. If that you was know? heaven and then I can end it every one time. I don't mean to kill myself, but I was like, let me get an end point. Yeah, yeah. No, and I, then I, like, I, once I die, they, maybe another challenge, something? Can we? It just, another like, challenge. This feels good. The, the life we're living now feels good because there's, uh, there's a point to it. There's a there's finality.
Nice. Yeah, there's enough randomness to it. You can't even envision what you would think of as heaven for yourself. Because like what you're talking about, the monotony of what you're talking about sounds fucking horrible. Yes. And we can't, we're, we're not advanced enough to envision exactly what everything being perfect was. Even when you're all set up and you got good things and you, you know, your house is right and everything, you always want some more shit or some different shit. It never, you're, you're never kind of satisfied with all that stuff. So I, I get the point completely. It's, uh, it's yeah, too to much for point, my feeble brain. To your point, like the people who are rich and people like, well, they have well enough money and they're fine. They don't need that extra thing. Like, people want money. And once they get money, they want more money. Right. Like, <laughs> right exactly. to, like if I get to 20, like right now, a person that's making less than $400,000. Um, <laughs> if I make, if, if I make over that, I'm sure I'm be like, yeah, this is good. But also that's better. I want a yacht. <laughs> or something else, something I don't yeah. need, and something I, I, you know, if I can find a way to get more money to get that, I'll definitely do that. Yeah, it never ends. It kind of never ends. Money's All right, well, that was, that was thing two. Uh, thing three is a question for us, and I kind of debated back and forth. I had a goofy Halloween question, but I think I'm going to couch that for now. <laughs> okay. Uh, we okay. all have White Sox podcasts. So let's go down the podcast route for one second. What's the thing you enjoy most about creating a White Sox podcast? Obviously, other than the enormous wealth it creates. <laughs> um, blue Chew commercials. I was going <laughs> to say, can we break for a Blue Chew spot right now? <laughs> Herb didn't have any free samples when I was on the podcast. That's, he wasn't handing them out to guests yet, I guess. So. That's bullshit. Because I wanted to try that shit just to try it. And I know my wife would have enjoyed it. So I would definitely have liked to have some blue chew. See, I yeah, think they, they only did it that first month I was working there. I think I gave yeah, that's right. you guys them. haven't. Yeah, you guys haven't done it, right? Because you, you guys have the bars that you do. Like there's a, yeah, a protein bars. bars and stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. I ate them. They're, they're all right. I'm, but protein bars is not my thing. Uh, as you see, yeah, I already get enough protein. <laughs> um, but the best thing is. You know, I am a producer, and like you guys, I don't speak on the air often. When I do, it's fun. But to get my thoughts and Tanny's thoughts about one of our favorite subjects out to the masses, that's nothing better. Like, to have your opinion out there, and whoever listens, listens. Whoever consumes it, it's all good. Good, bad, positive uh, feedback is always appreciated. And I don't know, like, I you know, tweet a lot, but getting your thoughts out long form about the subjects that are pressing. I don't think there's anything better, especially with a guy like Chris Tannehill. So creative firstly about the audio we use and the structure of the show. And then the guy is cerebral. He's calm. He's not like me. who's flying off the handle. It's always driver, no putter ever. And he's, <laughs> he's the guy that's the opposite. So when I first started, it was just me yelling at a damn a microphone all the time yep. and now he comes yeah, in that was and good yin yang you know it's <laughs> it, it's it balances out and i have an enjoyable time every time we get a chance to speak about the white Sox, especially with chris Tannehill. that's good i don't have that same experience these guys are dickheads no i <laughs> i <clears throat> what i like is and, and i i you probably know this you might not know this i'm a stay-at-home father so i'm at home with the two-year-old and the four-year-old all day and I don't think critically about much of anything. And I, and I think about this. This is the one part of my life that I actually study something and go and look at something. Because I have two guys that I'm with who do a lot of research, have a lot of intelligence in this matter. And I know Sal's thinking this right now. Fuck you, Sal. That... <laughs> I don't, I'm not like a, mo, a very cerebral person when it comes to all this. Now I have thoughts and I, I have my Frank the Tank moments when we will be talking about something and I will say something and these guys will read into it and say, what you're saying is, and then it's like, it's like a bell goes off or it gets re like a, a podcast gets released to the public and they, they hear something. And they're like, I liked when my sock summer said this. And I'm always like, okay, well, I must know something because I'm getting reinforced by these two guys or somebody out there saying he's smart in this regard. And, and it, it makes me feel good. It makes me feel like I'm still doing something like I'm at work or, you know, I have some type of motivation to continually go on and do stuff other than just my, my children's happiness, which is definitely drives me every day. Right. So, you know, <laughs> and it's like, and when we come in and, and then on the non-sock side, 
I, these guys are, are good friends. And it's very hard to make friends when you're over the age of 30 and to have found two guys that are not only related, but also like into the same shit I am, like drinking a lot, <laughs> watching Eat, White Sox eating. baseball games a lot, <laughs> like chilling in hot tubs with each other a lot. It's like a lot of good things. Like you just don't find a lot. And, it, and, the, and the, what I was getting to is that I am in these things trying to make these two laugh and make them, you know, like that, that's my goal. I don't really care much about the, the fans. I like the fans. I like our audience, but I'm doing this for these guys because I respect them and I want to get their approval in there <laughs> and get them to laugh. So I always thought Pat was, or Pat, sorry. I always thought beef loaf was much older than me because he had to shit so much together. And then also with Teresa, <laughs> the same deal. And then when I found out they were both younger than me, I was like, fuck, I really got to get my shit together. <laughs> so that, that's how it, that's how it was Big with doing. me. So yeah, no, I, I, I love doing it. It's fun. And it's, it's also fun because it's organic and it's nothing that we've ever put forth like you like we have to do this this has to happen like i i slacked all 2020 not writing a lot of blogs and not one of these guys fucking said hey what the fuck dude like they they understood they saw what was happening they were just like all right you do you and you'll you'll be back when you're ready and that's that's basically what's happened so and you had a fire blog the other day I about toy story, oh, toy, story. Fuck toy story i, I fuck love this blog <laughs> Fuck no funny trails go, me you go there. for it, baby <laughs> yeah for, for me like one of the one of the the most fun things about about doing a podcast and about about doing all this to me is just beef you know me i love like conspiracy theories and i love like i i like watching like shit like ancient aliens where these guys are like well, I saw this, so must mean aliens. Like, like I, I love shit like that. And I like to think about things differently. And what, what this allows me to do is to, to see kind of a lot of what, like, especially with, with White Sox Twitter and with, with all these other podcasts, I get to see what everyone thinks about a situation. And I especially like when a lot of people are on the same side thinking the exact same thing about a situation. And it just like blows up in my mind. Like they must be wrong. There's, there's so many people that think this <laughs> shit, they gotta be wrong and engage myself in a way to that, where I try and figure out how could it be the other side? How could it be different than this? And like, I don't get to do that a lot in the rest of my life. And so it's, it's really, it's really fun. It's really fun to think about things that way. Um, and in terms of baseball, it's okay to like throw those things out, even if they're crazy. You know, there's a lot of other parts right. in life where you probably don't want to do that. And so, <laughs> and so, so like in, in the baseball terms, it's really, it's, it's, for me, it's really fun to just try, kind of look at something and say, okay, everyone thinks that this is, this is bad or this is good why why wouldn't it be let me try and take the other side of this and and you know play devil's advocate to this and figure out you know is there is there something that we're all missing is there something that's just it's there but it's it's not obvious and can we find this i love doing that and it's so much fun to especially with with you guys to just bounce that off you guys you know the, the shit that we say on the podcast is a portion of what we talk about and like the yeah, things that right. me and people yep. talk about in private chats or in, in person when we can actually do that. Like we, we saw each other this weekend from 40 feet apart yelling at each <laughs> other across the street. The street. Talking to each other. <laughs> um, like I, tr I, I treasure all of that. Like that's awesome to me and I have so much fun doing it. So that's, that's gotta be my answer then. I love it. I, I, I think for me, and this, maybe this kind of goes both ways. It goes listening and, and also when we're creating. Like, Herb, I, I listened to yours and Tanny's podcast from last night that you put out with your five manager choices, and you brought up Raul Mondesi. And I hadn't thought about Raul Mondesi in 25 fucking years. And, like, it's for me, in the creative process, those are the moments to me where I'm like, oh, shit, I didn't even think about that. What is that? kind of thing and f and f for us making a podcast if we could distill a point that we clearly understand that the masses don't understand and 
put it into an analogy that makes it so everyone can get it and everyone gets to the point. It's like, oh, shit, yeah, that kind of does make sense. Or put it into a joke and people are repeating it on Twitter and it's become, it becomes a thing because, okay, we distilled it down to where it's relatable. You know, we, we get something that we get, but maybe not everyone else gets. And we, we work it in our discussions and it becomes a thing. Okay, here's kind of what it's like to everybody out there who they can all say, oh, yeah, this is kind of, I, I get that point. I understand now because you related it to something in my real life. That shit is super rewarding because everyone has a different background and stuff and everyone thinks about things a little differently. But if you can get that thought to permeate out there and people understand it, even if they don't agree, even if they say, Beef Loaf, you're full of shit, I would never trade Michael Kopech. I want to put the thoughts out there. You know, I want the <laughs> ideas out there and let people tell me I'm an idiot. But at least let, let's think about it. Let's, let's kind of go down the road and figure out what it is. What, you know, one of the things I, I don't like about some of the podcasts is everyone is trying to be a copy of Sox Machine. They're not you guys and not us for sure, but, uh, but some of the like, new podcasts. You're like, you're just trying to be the same shit. Be a unique thing that, that like, it's like, oh, shit, I got to listen to that because it's not like the other things that are out there. You know? and, and for us, we've always kind of been this goofy thing that is too long. Like everyone is... Everyone who has media <laughs> trainings like, don't do a three-hour podcast, you know? And we're like, well, fuck, this is what we do. Like, we don't know. We're stupid. We don't know how to do this, but at least it's uniquely <laughs> ours, you know? So I always feel like if we could just get there and kind of put the, put the thoughts out in the ether, and maybe two or three people will get them, and then that always makes me feel real happy. I mean, it's, it's, this is not – we're not doing this for money, not doing it for fame. We're doing it. It's like cathartic. It's good. We enjoy talking either to White Sox just or just to your friends. Like, yeah. enjoy having the conversation. And like you said, it doesn't need to be a thousand people. It doesn't need to be a bunch of people listening to your thing. Two, three people you reach. Hey, man, I heard this last night on the podcast. Like you know, Mike Sox Summers was saying, like the guy or guy or girls that's reaching back to you is like, man, great point on that. It feels good. It feels good. The, the feedback, even the bad feedback, that person's listening. Yes. Like it's he or she's taking their time to listen to what you're saying. And then they're giving you honest feedback. And that's all you want. As long as you're not calling me names, I'll take the feedback. I'm good. I'm a grown man. And uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, there's somebody at the one at the 108 uh, Reggie's event said, Hey, Herb came to meet you. I don't like your work. Just wanted to say that in your face. I was like, hey, man, I'm not for everybody, and I appreciate you being a man and saying it to my face. I don't know who it was, but I, I respect that guy much more than the trolls on Twitter calling me names or calling everybody names and not putting their face in front of it. And I was, I was like, man, that's the type of thing I like. If you don't like me and don't like what I'm saying, say it to my face. We'll have a discussion, and we, I think we did, a brief discussion, left on good terms, and we bounced out. Yeah. And I, I think that's what it is. I think when you have to uh, actually converse with the person face to face, uh, a lot of walls get dropped, and you can't you can't be that tough guy that you are when you're in the safety of your mom's basement. Like you you have to actually be who you are because you might get slapped right in the face. You know, like you, who knows? You know, like somebody could do something. Like I'm not a small guy, so I don't have a lot of guys come up to me and say you fucking suck. They've never, like, no one has said that to my face. I know they think it, but they also are like, you're a really fun guy because you know what? You drink a lot. You like to yell things. You have a very good knowledge of 95 to 2005 porn. I, there's some things I can get from you. So, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have this guy in my pocket just in case I need to talk to him. So, and clearly the screwball whiskey has kicked in. And this is great. <laughs> yes. So, who's the best actress? From that era. From that era? Oh, you know who I really loved? <laughs> really, really loved. was I loved Jenna Jameson. She was the, the girl that probably put me over the top. That era, Jenna Jameson, was awesome. <laughs> But and she was put you over the top. <laughs> no, like, like got me into like fandom. Like, you why didn't, you didn't why watch I would want to be before like that. then? Like, oh no, I loved it. <laughs> but she was like the first one that I was like obsessed, like not obsessed, but just like into. Right, like I was a fan. Like became a fan. Like the Sox. This the first baseball team I became a fan of. Like she became the first fan. But I would say when it when it ended, 
um and, and i wasn't so much into everything anymore like i liked abby brooks i liked um uh oh sarah J. but she had three good years and they happened to be in the in the in the years that i was watching so uh see i still watch but i, I we're not we'll talk about that later but uh <laughs> but that, that way back in those days jenna jameson was my was my top and i and it's funny and Herb, I'll just say this real quick. I waited in line to meet her and I waited in line for almost three hours. And when I got up to the the area to get in to get her autograph, they cut the line and everybody went like was done, right? And I couldn't oh. meet her. And I was like, fuck this shit. I am never waiting in line for an autograph again. And yo, I still go to Sox Fest and wait hours in lines for fucking people's autographs regardless and it's like i i had told myself back then i'm not gonna do this ever again and here i am doing it still anyway it was bad my sock summer what is the name of your jenna jameson podcast i want to <laughs> she lost it though man like like she she got like into the drugs or something and, yeah. and, and then i wasn't i wasn't a fan after that like i liked i liked fat jenna jameson like chubby jenna jameson and like when she was popular in the beginning, like private parts era, when she was in the Howard Stern movie, like that was my favorite Jenna. And then like, it just, yeah, it just spiraled out of control and she became a lunatic. Like she had some weird <laughs> shit go down on MySpace with her husband. I remember seeing all that shit and I was like, God, this is odd. And then she ended up, I don't know if you know her, but I used to live out West in Huntington beach. Um, and she ended up moving in with like Peter Ortiz and wow. made, like marrying him. And he's from Huntington. They lived in Huntington. And uh, I, I, I was just like, this is just so bizarre. But at that point I had nothing. I didn't really want anything to do with her. So if she could have asked, I still would have said no, you know? Right, sure. If you can find that all on his Jenna Jameson blog, too. Yeah. <laughs> Between the cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> well, Herb, thanks so much for joining us on Three Definitely. Things. We really appreciate you coming through. We got to get you on the podcast long form. Hell yes. We got to get you on for three hours and talk all kinds of shit. So thank you once again for joining us. I'm in. Just tell me when, and I'm good for it. Thank you for having me, guys. It was really fun, as always. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Herb, man. We'll talk to you soon. Tell everybody Definitely. we said hi. <laughs> we'll do.